Royal Table Talk. My name is Latoya Conway Hampton, and I am your host. And I have to let you know that today's conversation, I'm really excited to have. So, as a mother of nine and 22 grandchildren, absolutely, I said 22 grandchildren, I am amazed that I get to do what I, I feel like I'm called to do. And so I shared a little bit about my past and some of the things that I went through, but I was blessed to hire a young man who I feel that we walked along the same, um, the same street, the same road, and now we're both here on the other side from sort of like from the hood to being honored, right? And so today I want to talk a little bit about what it looks like, um, what it was like before, what it's like now, but I want to bring to some and introduce to you to others, um, a friend that I will call him a friend today, and uh, Mr. Jerome. Hi, Mr. Jerome. How are you today? I'm good. I'm blessed. I feel good. We're here, and I'm glad to be on your show. I I, I want to say this. Mm -hmm. I offered you this invitation some time ago, and you accepted. Tell me why did you accept to come on to Royal Table Talk and share with the world um, about who you are, what you get to do today. Uh, because I like what you do with the community, the drive you have, the passion you have, and you have a wide audience, a broad audience, and you know, sometimes that one person might be watching and they need that words of encouragement, that person that been there, that walked that path, and now is over here doing the right thing and providing for his family. Whew, I agree. So um, for those of you that are tuning in, um, just be patient with us because it, it might get emotional for you. It might get emotional for me and it may get emotional for Mr. Jerome because as I prepared last night, I just laid in the bed and I, and I really prayed about how this turns out. So although, although I get the blessing to be on this side, it's still a journey. And as we mature into adults, some of the things that happen in our home, some of the things that didn't happen in our own, in our home causes us to make some of the choices and the decisions that we make. And so, uh, Mr. Jerome, my question to you, first question is, what was it like growing up? Tell me, where did you grow up and what was it like? Well, I grew up in Inglewood on the west side and the bottom, 104th Street in Crenshaw. And when I walked on my door, there was gang members you know, women out there walking the streets, and we had some positive influencers too, but it was mainly just watching the negative, the negativity of our community. So from there, you know, we get involved with what's going on in our neighborhood, which is mostly gangs and whatever, you know, your, you know, your lifestyle turns out to be. So I end up joining the gang, the neighborhood gang, and hanging out and doing what I had to do to get to prison, basically. Mm. Mm. So would you say that, and, 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 and quote unquote, it's kind of a, a um, it's kind of something that you hear often, but would you say that you became a product of your environment? Yes, I say product and not victim, because we still here. A lot of people say victim, but Yes, a product of our environment, most definitely, most definitely. And for some of us that don't have an older brother, older uncle, these are our older brothers and our older uncles. So we look up to them mm -hmm. and we start doing the things they doing. You know, nobody's telling me, go join a union, go get a job, you know, go do this. They want to, let's go spray paint over here. Let's go do this. Mm -hmm. So it was all havoc. It was just negativity around us. but. We're so blind to it and we don't have the mental capacity to look past it sometimes. And sometimes some people do. That's why some people get out of it on time. Some of us see death and some of us go, you know, to the pen, get locked up and go through all the judicial systems. So so my question is, what was it like growing up with mom and dad in the home? How, how was your mom? How did your mom raise you and how did your dad raise you? Well, Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I had a two-parent home. Unfortunately, my dad passed away when I was six years old. But from the things that I learned from my dad in those six years, you know, he had me right there working on cars with him and doing things around the house as a baby. And my mom, she's a good lady, accountant, personal accountant. 
and we had a good household. Uh, I have three sisters and one brother, five children was in the house. And my mom raised me with respect and we started off going to church and all that as a kid and growing up. But once we became teenagers, that's when the rebellion started. You know, I started hanging out, riding the bikes with my friends. And the next thing you know, it's the juvenile system coming up. Mm. You know, it's the prison system coming up after that. And she always, you know, she whooped me. You know, we got abused with this kid. You know, <laughs> that's yes. what I call it because yes. we got yes. whipped with Tyco tracks and all oh, that. Yeah. And it didn't work. You know what I'm saying? It didn't work. Well, where whether it could have been a lot of communicating like we have to do nowadays with our kids really have a hold of them and get to their mind. Back mm. then, you know, we just get our whooping and we go Got back and get, yeah, and, <laughs> and then we go right back and do the same thing. Like, oh, I'm just gonna get a whooping. And then that's where it progresses to, we trying to get over on our parents to mm. where we start getting in trouble with the law. But I, my mom is a very good lady. My grandma, very orienta family orientated and you know, I'm kind of like the black sheep of the family, mm. you know, but now I'm doing better than a lot of my family, but it was a growth process. I'm blessed for my life and the lessons that I was taught, you know, mm. unfortunately had to be some hard lessons, but that's what it takes sometimes for us to, you know, get shook up and where, you know, where our third eye can open, we can see life for what it is and having kids and living for them now and being a positive example. You know, my kids don't have to do no jail time, no gang banging. Daddy did all that for you. Just grow up and be square and be a productive member of society. But my mom and dad installed some good uh, qualities, in, qualities in me for sure. I give her that. I give my mom her props. <laughs> I give her that and my daddy. And then when my stepdad came into the picture, he really, he really took me, you know, I was really, it's like my dad never left because he was into the same thing. So was your, mm -hmm. did you ever like rebel against your stepfather? Like you're not my yeah. dad. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah. Oh man, Patrick, I love you. Woo, we jumped him. Oh yeah, he went through some stuff. Okay. Yes. Yes. We, and what, did he? Did you guys jump him because you felt like what he was doing was inappropriate? Was he no, fighting with your mom? What no, you think you guys no, not at all. It's just that, you know, I guess you when you have your tribe, you know, and a new king trying to come into the house and, mm. you know, we wasn't receptive to him yet. Oh, mama, oh, mama, we tired. Of, oh, mama, you know, mm -hmm. we're not going to play this role for you, mama. We bad, you know. But it ended up being, he's like, even right now, 30-something years later, I can call him right now. I can... Mm. He can call me. He taught me a lot as far as hands-on, all the tools, um, you know, building a house, fixing cars with him. I was under there with him, you know, to him buying my first dirt bike, and it was broke, and he said, well, if you want to ride it, you better fix it. And he taught me how to take the motor apart and everything mm. and get it running. So, I mean, that's that was something that's critical and that's crucial and something that we need in our households is the two parents if we're blessed and fortunate that's right. for that but it started off rough with them it started off rough but it you know eventually it turned out to be like that's my best friend that's cool. and that's cool to hear mm. I, you you said that and i show i was triggered by my son one you know out of the seven children that i had when i mm -hmm. got with my husband i had one that just could not understand this is not my daddy because I'm very, I'm a drill girl. So me and my son will be fixing on things. And when my husband came, it kind of became he and I. And my son had a hard time processing that. Mm -hmm. Like, well, what about me? Yeah, like, like, why are you coming way. taking over? Yeah. Um, we don't need him, mama. We yeah, got it. <laughs> but to stay there for mm -hmm. a man to come in when you have children that's experiencing, first of all, a loss. Mm hmm um, not just uh, not just grieving his death, but grieving the fact that he's not at home. Yeah. That's a deeper level of grief for a yes. child when dad's not around, mm -hmm. especially a boy child. Yes, right. Most definitely. Um, I also want to say that you mentioned a little bit about being in gangs, mm -hmm. and so why do you believe that you chose the opportunity to 
hang out with gang members? Because it started off, of course, with my age group of guys, of brothers. We start off just being friends and riding our bikes through the neighborhood and, you know, going through L.A. You know, in L.A., we riding from the west side to the east side, the north side, the south. We going through everything. So our big brothers, or their big brothers, was already you know, gang banging. Mm. So we watching them pull up like, oh, they in the low riders. Oh, that look nice. Oh, that look cool. Mm. They riding around on the beach cruise, the big old boom box. Like, oh man. And everybody, you know, is dressed in uniform, you know, and that's, that's what we see. It's like an army, our colors, you know what I'm saying? From both sides, they dressed in the, un in the uniforms, they creased up, mm. you know, so for, uh, and even with a father, he'd tell you, you know, my stepdad, you know, he'd be like, man, well, I can't stop it. So you guys can hang out in my backyard, all mm -hmm. your friends. So we hear the neighborhood words, the neighborhood slang, we take it on. And then it goes to y'all old enough. And, you know, gang banging, there's no age limit. Mm -hmm. You know, if you start gang banging at 12, that means tomorrow you can go fight a grown man or you can go, you know, harm a, a grown man. You know, you just trying to prove, put your name out there. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it'd be hard for us not to get involved in it because that's what we see every day. We go to school with them. When we get out of school, we hanging out, riding our bikes. And now you become part of your area. And you, and the cool thing, I have friends that died. That wasn't, I have friends that died that wasn't even, you know, hanging out with us. They just live on our street. So when they we, were victims yes, of the environment. environment yes mm -hmm. that's yes. they were the victims of the environment yes and wow i i think what stood out for me the most is when you spoke about um just being in the neighborhood and some people getting killed and have absolutely nothing to do with them i remember um being on the streets and there was like a big picnic going on and everybody had these sweatshirts with their names on it mm -hmm. and one was little man and one was big man and little man went and robbed the um the ice cream guy he he took like a, a dollar 99 cent thing off his thing and the guy was arguing with him but the guy went home and got a gun and he shot big man and big man got killed but it was little man who did it mm -hmm. for a dollar right at the man. wrong time at the wrong place yeah. being in uniform yeah being right? in uniform yes <laughs> being in uniform yeah and and, and i want to yes. say this because for girls it was different it was mm -hmm. much different because I dated a guy, well, a couple guys, one from Santana Block and one from a, uh, and one from East Coast, but both mm -hmm. of them end up getting killed in the line of duty, as they call it. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. my connection was different. I didn't mm -hmm. have to do some of the things the girls did, although I was roughing out there, right? Yes. And so what I realized is, is I started hanging out in the streets because I didn't feel protected in my home. Yes. My mother didn't protect me. I was yes. being assaulted. There was drugs and alcohol. There was fighting all the time. Yes. And then when I got connected with these group of, um, now I'm going to call them uh, busy teens, mm -hmm. um, they, they used to call me a menace to society, yes. right? Yes. And so... Later on, as I grew up and matured, I realized that these are a bunch of kids trying to find their way. Yeah. At what point in your life would you say, okay, now I understand that that's not the life that I want to live. I need to make some changes. When was that for you? For me, it took me going to juvenile hall, YA, and to doing 16 years in prison, all level four straight, mm -hmm. not including the 16 months a year there you know a total of 22 years of my 48 i just turned 48 22 of that was spent incarcerated freedom impaired is what i like to say mm -hmm. so it for me it didn't take till i did the last prison term to me going in there to start meditating start doing yoga and reading reading books, reading different religious books, the Quran, the Bible, the Catholic Bible, just comparing and just having that third eye open. Once my third eye got open and I figured I was about nine years into my 16 year prison term that mm -hmm. it got open, you know, from seeing what's going on in prison, you know, prison dictates what's going on on the street. So if there's a lot of what we call 
uh, uh, make it light homosexuality in prison, it's going to go to the street. You know, unfortunately, you know what I'm saying? That's just how it is, you know, in the pecking order. So it took me nine years of that 16 because I was in there running amok in there, young, active, and my generation, we was the first generation to start saying YGs. So, and we was from San Diego, all of Damu sets from San Diego to Sacramento. You came under there, we was under one umbrella. We wasn't separating, we came in like terrorists. But we changed a lot too. We changed a lot, you know, the different aspects. It wasn't a lot of playing and kicking in prison once we came through. We rolled up some big homies that wasn't with it, some killers. You know what I'm saying? So there's, you know, at the same time, nobody is bigger than the program. Mm. So the system, the right? The system, it's, yes. it's the system. And, yes. and I think even today, even today, there are systems everywhere. There's the child welfare system. There's mm. the, the law enforcement the system. system. Um, there's the street system. system. I mean, the, it, the world is full of systems. And, yeah. and, and I think I really want to hone in on how did you decide that, okay, I'm incarcerated. And, and somebody named it, which was really deep to me, a concrete casket. Yeah. And that's like so deep because you're in there scratching. You want out, you can't get out, mm -hmm. but you have to adjust to what's going Mentally. on in the world. Yes. Um, I have a son who's incarcerated and it's not a night that go by that I don't think about his safety, that I don't think about what is that environment doing to his mind, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Because as a mother, who lived who lived the street life and mm -hmm. made the changes? My life changed because I got two kids' father that got killed in drive-bys, mm -hmm. and so um, one was in Compton and one was in L.A. and that told me that my life wasn't it wasn't right. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm a girl. I like them rough kind of guys. Cause yeah. I need somebody that needs to be on my level yeah. as I thought. <laughs> yeah, as and, you should. Um, <laughs> What I realize is, is um, I have a man that's on my level mentally mm -hmm. right now, mm -hmm. and he allows me to be who I am, but yeah. I know to respect him as a man. Yeah. He's a strong man. Mm -hmm. And so I had to really look at that, that the choice that I was choosing. Mm -hmm. What type of woman did you decide? Because I know you're married and you have a beautiful wife. What made you choose the wife that you chose today, who is totally different from the life you lived? Because I'm not going to lie, getting out of prison, I was into cougars and just being real you're older, older women. women and being fresh out i wasn't looking for a handout because i got out and i applied what i learned i'm prison and see it has to start in prison to change not to uh switch the subject but you have to want to change there so i went what we call behind the wall to the trades plumbing electrical masonry you know, I start learning the trades and necessary things to apply. I start <laughs> thinking of my future. Like, okay, I'm not living in here. I'm getting out of here. So I have to start learning what's going on in the world. And when I get out, I went straight into the union, the electrician union. And then from there, I got bored with it, learned it, built a lot of Los Angeles, a lot of tra um, uh, landmarks out here. And from there, I went to the plumbing union. From there, I went to iron worker union, local 433. And that was exciting, but it was me trying to give back. You know, mm -hmm. I want to bring, I just don't, I'm not just the type of person that a, you know, um, take, gloat, no. yeah, take. Mm -hmm. So I brought everybody, all my friends in, fr all these brothers, uh, Hispanic, white, every race. I brought them into the unions and now a lot of them own houses is doing good. You know, we started coaching Pee Wee football. That was my way of giving back. Mm -hmm. And from there, I get into the youth. Hey, I'm your uncle. Don't do this. You know, I'm leading by example. That's, mm -hmm. that was key. But um, one thing that I, I learned in, while I was incarcerated was respect 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 goes a long way if you get the more respect you give the more you're going to get back you know what I'm saying and you have to be receptive to change you can't be scared of change because change brings good so once I learned them things and um start applying it you know and cut when once I came home you know I was just Hey, I want to do that. I want to drive trucks, which is, you know, in prison, we, 
that'd be like the conversation as far as something quick to get in and ain't not tripping on our record it was truck driving so a lot of people okay i want to get on in truck driving but anyway back to the subject of how i met my wife i was used to when i first came home i was used to cougars oldest women and they bought buy you everything it's you know true story but my wife now she's 11 years younger than me when we first met we click she have an old she had an old soul she been through a lot mm -hmm. and she tell me now she called me her knight in shining armor mm -hmm. our love for each other the love the respect and the loyalty what made me marry her was the loyalty mm. she, she was so loyal she's so loyal and she was willing to do the dirty work no you don't have to do that you know hearing that from a lady that's younger than me like why i never heard that from mm you know what I'm used to and we fell in love with each other and it's not the age difference because it's the mental like you said mm -hmm. you have to be when you get with somebody you have to be spiritually mentally and physically attracted to this person to make it last the physical is just we looking at each other mm -hmm. and that's the flesh but mental is deeper y'all on the same wavelength y'all share the same ideology the mm -hmm. same ideas mm -hmm. and then spiritually of course the spirit we all have spirit so when you connect it on those three aspects of life mm -hmm. you know it's like undeniable then like dang you the one and when we first met toya told me she said you're gonna marry me. You don't want to get married, but you're gonna be my husband. I said, yeah, right. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now here you are, married. Yeah, married with the baby, uh, our three-year-old, and wow. we're gonna break the news right here. We think she's pregnant right what? now. Yeah. <laughs> Another one. Well, so, right now. <laughs> so you know, um, you know, we enjoying life, mm -hmm. and we just make each other smile. That's right. And we have each other back. So I didn't even want to get married, but being around a loyal female and a God-fearing lady, mm -hmm. and, you know, we share the same back, I mean, as far as growing up in L.A., so we have the same, you know, share the same views. But she, I fell in love with my wife, and it really made it me, works, huh? yeah, and it made me mature even more. You know, mm. it really turned me to a provider. You know, she was working, but I told her, no, I make enough money. You stay at home, get the kids to school. Because if that school call, I want somebody to go pick up our kids. That's right. You know, combined together, we have seven kids with our family together. But they all call us mommy, daddy. That's right. You know what I'm saying? It was, and it works. It Did works. you imagine sitting in your bunker, maybe year 10, that you will be the man that you are today yeah year 10 yeah okay. year eight year seven no year five okay. four, let's go with year yeah. six no year six what no. was your what was your thoughts when i get out of here i'm going to i wasn't even thinking about getting out of prison i was in prison i was in the shoe program in california and corcoran mm -hmm. and i was acting a fool on the prison yard you know, want to fight everything. It's not even being the hardest. It's somebody looked at you wrong. Mm -hmm. And my big homies had to pull me to the side and like, you know, we're in level four prison. There's no gang banging on level four prison. Mm. We move, there's more unity over here. Mm -hmm. So I had to really sit back, but I was still a little hard head. So, you know, getting into it with the COs all the time. That was my main thing. I. I had a problem with authority. Mm. I had a big problem with authority. And yet right now you're you're working with youth like y'all can't do this. Yes. You can't do that. Yes, you because have to you, listen. You have to listen. You're gonna mind somebody. Body, yes. You gonna mind or somebody. Or they're gonna sit you on your pockets. You're gonna sit down somewhere. Mm. So I had a problem with authority and it took me a long time to stop getting into it with the correctional officers. And it wasn't even the other stuff. And of course, in there, you carrying your weapons. You know, you doing your do. We in there living, shooting dice, living, eating good. Mm -hmm. You know, we just in the big old cement coffin. We walking around. We just in there, and you really have to prepare your mind where you at, because it's a lot of people that was well known killers and gangsters on the street that went up in there and folded. 
-hmm. and Foley couldn't take that pressure. Yeah, I, I couldn't. I, I'm gonna be real honest. I'm a growing up. I didn't have a lot of um, authority or the relationship that I was in. So once I started um, learning what I want. I, I won't let nothing stop me. If it's what I want, I'm going to go get it. Yeah. If this ain't what yeah. I want, I'm not accepting it because you say I need to have it. That's not what I want. Yeah. I am independent. I know what I want. I know what I like. And to be locked up, I couldn't really truly imagine not getting what I want. Yeah. Um. And, and not in a selfish way, but I'm not going to do that because that's going to make me not get what I want. Yeah. I, I don't want that. Yeah. My son is... um. He often gets in trouble with the correctional officers as well. But he was also the one that would never listen to what the rules were. Yes. It's like, I tell you so not to do this, you're going to do what you want to do. Yes. I tell you to stop. I tell you to stay home, you're sneaking out the window. Yes. I tell you not to go breaking in other people's houses. Every time I turn around, somebody's saying, your son was seen that in my backyard. Yeah. Just not respecting right. the law. Mm -hmm. Or yourself. Or, or your yourself. mom. We have no respect. That's what I say. That's where it starts with respect yeah. and especially growing up in the city you know you want to be the hardest mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying it's all a role we it's just a role that we plan acceptance and, and, yes and you don't have to accept it mm -hmm. but being that a lot of us not strong mentally and some of us don't have that person what well, they do because your parents whisper in your ear not to do that you know, not or yelling your ear. Or yelling your ear. Yes, <laughs> yes, no, definitely. Whisper. It's just we wasn't as, uh, we don't, we we don't respect our mom's mm -hmm. authority at times. Mm -hmm. Where we love our moms, we're yeah. not saying that we're not gonna disrespect her. But you know, we see our friends next door hanging out to two in the morning. So you know, that's how a lot of it happens. Mom, I'm going in the backyard. And next, you know, we jump in the fence. We, the fence and mom, I'm right here uh, next door. But it's 20 homies over there and you know it's 20 people over there and mm -hmm. then you just start doing what they doing that's you know they pass you your first joint your big homies pass you your first 40 at you know 14 mm -hmm. and you know it happens and like that there we, just, we go yes it's over after i'm not gonna lie when i got my first 40 and my first blunt it was over like whoa <laughs> you know mm -hmm. and we was only 14 13 14 and now it's happening at 10, 11. Oh, you know, yeah. You know, times has changed. But once we get that, and now we want to be the hardest. We pick up our character. We get our nickname. Mm -hmm. You know, life is all a movie, and God gave us all a role to play in it. So we play in our role. And unfortunately, some of us get killed in that. Some of us do a lot of prison time and some of us get to go to college you know that's why so many professional athletes and you know and entertainers actors that come from these gang banging backgrounds and now they want to act like they're gang banging you know with all the money so my question yeah. is as we bring this to a full circle mm -hmm. there are a lot of people in the world that can't find their way maybe it's mom and dad are together or not maybe it's just the environment or maybe they just want to fit in and be a part of if you can share one word with a young man or a young woman that's going down that road of destruction mm -hmm. what would you say one word reevaluate <laughs> mm. reevaluate Reevaluate, reevaluate your thinking, reevaluate yes. what you see, see. reevaluate yes. the environment. Yes. You can take that word and just really expand. Absolutely. Reevaluate. Re and mm. I think that's what you did. I think yeah. being incarcerated, spending mm -hmm. that time at at year nine, mm -hmm. you was like, I need to reevaluate myself yes. and do something different. Yes. And I had the CEOs getting at me like, Gilbert, you don't even have life. Man, why are you around here? Acting mm. like you got life when the lifers didn't lay down. They took cigarettes. They took the weights. Yeah. They took the family visits from them. Yeah. And, you know, they didn't lay down. Yeah. You know, so I'm like, damn, they telling me that. Yeah. Let me sit back. Oh, man, what's going on? I, that's when my third eye, they had a yoga program. 
and a, a meditation program. And once I went to the, I signed up, and I only signed up because it was females. I'm in prison. I ain't gonna lie. I want to go see the ladies in them yoga tights <laughs> or everything. And it ended up me going in there the wrong intentions end up being the right intentions. Uh -huh. And once I sat down there and they taught us how to meditate, and we was doing that yoga, and that third eye popped open, and I started reading all the Egyptian books and what it stood for. It got life got simpler for me. Mm -hmm. I was able to just walk up like I can walk up to a pack of people talking, and I can just look at them. Oh, I don't want to mess with him. That's I can, crazy. I can huh? read people. Mm -hmm. You know, it's really a gift. It's really that third eye is really real. So that allows me to go around now. That we you know they say you should have made a left turn. You know, now I can make that left turn three blocks up instead of getting closer to mm -hmm. what's going on. So you have the year nine, I want to say, and me being becoming one with nature is what I say. Mm. Becoming one with nature. And when, once that happened, you feel it on the inside. You know, I'm like, that oh, shift. yeah, that, that shift. shift. Like, oh, That's man, I've been wasting my time all these mm -hmm. years, man. Mm -hmm. All that negative energy I didn't put into the world. So now I say I want to put positive energy into the world. So I want to lead by example. Okay, there's no excuses. Once I, once I learned the laws and once, you know, the laws was passed and President Obama got it to where those that did a lot of prison time, you can still, they can only go back seven years and this and that, he made it possible so we don't have to come home and get on GR. You, we going straight into the building trade to careers. Mm -hmm. You go from prison to making $1,200 a week. Whoa. That's over 4,000 a month. You know what I'm saying? That's and, amazing. And, and so we've, we're blessed with that. So there's some of us that's leaders and some that's followers. So I felt I became a leader. Mm -hmm. And people see me like, oh, what you doing? You balling. Oh, I still got bills. I'm balling on the budget. Mm -hmm. You just don't know. Two checks is going to them. <laughs> really hard. three checks. Really three checks is going to them. And we living off that one check, you know. But um, once... Once I realized that gang banging the negativity, just being negative wasn't it no more. Mm -hmm. And it didn't even come a point. And, and, and this is the cold thing that, that sets in that really blind people. Like once we start gang banging and doing all that stuff, not one day do we ever think, well, I haven't, that dang, today I might get shot. Today mm -hmm. I might die. I never thought that ever. Mm -hmm. So, and I've been point, held point blank in the gun to go off. And all that, so all that come to play. Whoa, I've really got angels. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So once I got tired of that and was like, okay, this ain't it no more. And when I got out, I was blessed to get out. Mm -hmm. I applied what I learned in there. You know, the building stuff. Straight to the unions. You guys can go do this. Okay. And it was on from there. I like that money. No <laughs> looking back, huh? Yeah, no looking back. It was all gas, no brakes. And and then, you know, you have to be ready for that to be to become a productive member of society. So I, I, that's a major place to just put this conversation on rest. It is a process yes. to become a productive citizen of society, yes. especially when you come from a place that that environment is not so healthy, where yeah. you see the women that are walking the streets, you're not yeah. knowing if they're walking for themselves, they're walking for their for children, family, yeah. or they're being fed forced to walk. Yeah. Sometimes we have no clue on, am I going to die today? Sometimes we don't even we think don't, about that. Yeah. And, yeah. and today, this sh episode was brought to you to let you know that we can make changes in our life. Yeah. And one day at a time, we can become a healthier, responsible individual. And, and, and what he said that stood out the most was reevaluate Sometimes living in the street seems like it's the place that we need to be. It feels like it is calling us to be. It feels like they are actually our family. And what I want to say is 24 years down the line, I get to live a life beyond my wildest dreams because I made those changes. And we encourage you to look within yourself, reevaluate, and make it happen. My name is Latoya Conway Hampton, and you are? Jerome Gilbert. All right. And thank you so much for tuning in. Have a wonderful day. I'm LaToya Conway Hampton, signing off.